Mike, this is the first time you've heard this album, right? Yeah, you know what? I, I can't even remember hearing an entire Slaughter song. I was never into them at all. Yeah, I was never into them. Um, yeah, they were never on my radar. I remember seeing them in like Hit Parader when I was a kid, when I was in eighth grade. And whenever I'd see them in there, I'd be like, God, these guys are goofy looking. Like, I, I don't want anything to do with this stuff, <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. So what do you feel now after you listen to this album? I feel the same. I'm really? Fit. Yeah, I oh, feel I God. feel um, justified <laughs> in my decision to avoid them. It's really I went through some kind of a spiritual transformation with this album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can we definitely started, tell. Yeah, yeah, it started in Destiny already, because on on or in on on des- in Destiny, I guess you say right. in Destiny. With Destiny, I I was investigating my father's suicide and all that shit, yeah. and I went to therapy, and that really opened me up for this album. And I could write songs like Freedom because I really felt free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely tell a change on this album, especially from the yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's really positive, and, and uh, a lot of I went, I read a lot, and I went to a lot of the seminars, like with Brian Tracy's Phoenix, which was seven days in the countryside and had all kinds of exercises. And... Yoji and Joe, I get my ass kicked by Gracie's. Yes, he does. It is every time he wakes up, his freaking penance <laughs> in life is to wake up every morning and get beat up by a freaking Gracie. Well, wait, and he's then... blackballed from wrestling and fighting in Japan, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, I remember that, like, that happened in like 2000 because he got busted for marijuana. Yes. Yeah. Oh! Or I'll let it be known right off the bat. <laughs> you are my bitch boy. <laughs> I'm coming for you today. Today is a great day. I'm going to slap and punch and kick you because it's Honey Badger's day. <laughs> there you uh, I think this film is done in like three acts. I don't know if you would agree or not. And uh, for me, it's that middle act that's actually the best part of the movie. You know, the beginning's boring, the end's insane, but that descent into madness is like some of the best stuff in that film. Right, and I'm glad you brought up the beginning is boring. I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly how it felt back then. Now, I find the the beginning enthralling. You really? see, the, the difference between The Shining... And Dr. Sleep is that The Shining drags. Dr. Sleep doesn't drag at all. Not at all. I mean, and I haven't seen a three-hour version. That's, But it's two and a half and, hours. And, and you're like, oh, oh my God, dude. it's over? No, no. <laughs> and the three hours the same way. It doesn't drag. But what I love about The Shining is the dragging part, now that I've seen it so many times, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, that's it. That's I'm it. done. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, yeah. I apologize for thinking you were in suffocation, though. But I was really confused. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that, dude, that, 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 shit, was dude, that shit is funny, dude. That shit is funny because that happens with them. I'll be out with them, and like somebody will walk up and like, oh, you playing in suffocation too? I'm like, nah, man. I'm not in suffocation. I, I thought one of the members was in suffocation. The drummer. I'm like, yeah, the guy in the first record. Oh, you don't play Suffocation? No, I play Demolition Hammer. Oh, I love Demolition Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Yeah, I still play in a cool band. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. Well, let's so see if you can... Fuck? So what do you guys do for the rest of the show now? Oh, we just... News. Around. We do some news. You want to do some news with us? Let, let, let me... I'll stick around for the news. All right. I'll stick uh, for a half half hour more. I, I gave I gave an hour up. To fucking hang oh, out here. So. <coughs> Nate sweet. found us some news. So this is uh, Nate's section here. Oh, it's a bit depressing. What do you got? Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne diagnosed with Parkinson's. All right, that was like two weeks ago. Next. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hellstar Dark Lager from Burial Beer Company up in Asheville, and as always, Burial. Double the artwork, double the fun. 
And as usual for burial beers, like it said, it features some really awesome artwork from David Paul Seymour. And recently he was asked about Burial's distinctive opposing front and back artwork. And he said, it's the dark side and the light side. One's a little more beautiful and flowery and the other is more about death and dying. Nasty insects, more skulls and bones. The idea is that life is amazing juxtapositions. Life, death, dying, rebirth, light and dark, yin and yang. Um, as is also usual for burial beer, the cool looking can has some really awesome liquid inside of it. And in this case, it is a Munich Dunkel Lager, which is a German dark lager style that falls somewhere in between a Vienna Lager and a Schwartz beer. It's the traditional brown lager style of Munich, and because of the Munich malts, it's darker, richer, and more complex than the other traditional regional German brown lager styles. But it's not dark, dark, and roasty like the Schwartz beer style. Uh, Munich Dunkel Lager is going to be a decidedly malt forward beer, but with enough classic German hop character that's going to be somewhere between spicy, herbal, and floral. Uh, enough of that uh, hop character to keep it from being too sweet. The malt can show on the palate is toasty or slightly caramelish or nutty, but not roasty. And sometimes on the nose, you'll get some hints of chocolate or toffee. The mouthfeel is typically soft and medium to medium full bodied. All right, so the, the, the big headline here, what it should have been, is good guy with missile kills bad guy with terror organization, okay? I know that the good guy with a gun scenario really drives the liberals crazy, and if you add a missile into the equation, I'm sure their heads will fucking explode, but that is exactly what happened here, and it's time to all fucking face the facts on this one. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. A good guy with a missile killed a bad guy with a terrorist organization under his, under his wing. That's it. There's, there's, I mean, you can nitpick and you can worry and you can speculate and you don't want a war. Cool, I don't want a war either. But let's face it, there's really not a whole hell of a lot any of us can do right now about a potential war. If Donald Trump is going to start a war, he's going to start the war. He's, he's damn sure not going to see Congress's approval, even though he probably should and, and constitutionally has to. Um, but I mean, like we get our say in November. If Trump starts a war between now and then, I won't be voting for him. Unless, of course, there's some justifiable reason for it. But, you know, I, I, will I vote for the Democrat? Hell no. I just won't be going to the vote, to the ballot box that day. But that's when we get our say. Well, I know, Tim, because, you know, it's a part of the history. It's a part of the process. Everything, one thing leads to the next, right. which leads to the next. Uh, uh, I probably would say... If you have, if you twist my arm and put a gun to my head, I'd probably say Melissa because that was uh, the first time. You know what I mean? The yeah, first, no, no, first, no, yeah. No. first actually... selfie, the first time. You know, it's like uh, the, the... somehow you all, you you remember the first woman you had, don't you? Yeah. 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 I'm trying to forget but that. No matter what, no matter how how she does uh, anything, she, you remember her. <laughs> uh, I, I I agree with you, Kim. I, I I I would like you know twist my arm, put a gun to my head. I'd say Melissa, but it hurts because I <laughs> yeah. feel like I feel like they're both yeah. equally amazing. But you know, like okay, you can only pick one. It's like okay, I pick Melissa, but I'm really upset now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. It's not. Uh... Not a, not a nice question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what we ask each other, you know, this multiple fake fans. Yeah, pick, you know, because everybody yeah. knows they're equally amazing. They're, I, right. I can't say one's better than the other, but, you know, okay, if I had to pick, you know. Yeah. But, uh, okay, yeah. so I, I had to go to the bathroom for a second. So I don't know if you guys talked about after. Uh, the Merciful Fate Breakup? Uh, we didn't get there yet. Well, uh, just now that you've mentioned uh, what was your favorite album, what's your favorite album cover? Oh, that, that's more. So, I think Melissa. Really? Yeah. Wow. Why is that? Chef shows up. He says, hey there, children. Stan says, hey, Chef. He says, how's it going? He says, bad. He says, why bad? He says, Chef is a new kid in school. He's a total weirdo freak. And then uh, we get our chef's song here, which says, oh, children, children, you shouldn't not like somebody just because they're different. Here, let me sing you a little song. <laughs> and it, uh, start, it, starts, it starts off all inconspic inconspicuous, kind of <laughs> like the later song, like, we got to work for a better tomorrow. We got to work for a better today. And I'm going to lay you down, woman. I'm going to caress your thigh. Wait, what was I talking about, children? <laughs> 
We're all special in our own way. Everybody's different, but that's okay. Cause even though we might have different color skin, different points of views, be tall or thin, it doesn't mean I can't lay you down, woman, and touch your silky skin. Put my love deep inside you where no man has ever been. Rub your legs, caress your thighs, and... What were we talking about again? What were we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle says the new kid and then all of a sudden Damien stands up on the table and he says death to the holy the wrath of the fallen angels now heads for all of us Rakdos Dabados Jesus what I'm about to say pains me to say this but I'm going to say it anyways now mind you before I say this keep in mind Diary of a Madman with Randy Rhodes, Bob Daisley, Lee Kerslake, and Ozzy Osbourne is in my top five favorite albums list of all time. But that being said, it's got to be the worst Ozzy album I've ever heard. Um, and I was not expecting Diary of a Madman or Blizzard of Oz Part 2. I was not expecting that at all. But... When you're putting out music that is supposed to define who you are as an artist or even who you are as a person at the moment, to me, it just it completely missed the mark. I'm proud of my years and my albums with my which I'm always very proud of that, so I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, do you play any other instruments? I did play oboe, uh, if you say it, but <laughs> when I was young, uh, I was forced to know, but I did for eight years. Uh, I can play piano, like very, you know, chords and melody lines. I'm not a piano player, so right. to say, but I can write a song with the help of the, of the piano. Uh, guitar, nah. Nah. nah, I think piano, yeah, a bit piano. I'm like yeah. a singer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how did you get involved with the uh, with nursing? Uh, before I joined Nightwish, I had decided to start to study in the university. I wanted to have a university degree, mm -hmm. and um, I did study psychology and behavioral science. I was aiming to be a coach. And so I did like half my bachelor degree. And then I joined the band and then I had to quit that, of course. And then when Nightwish ended, I got to be a mom again and my third child. And I really felt that I, I need to lean back on something, you know. I want to have a normal job because singing is not something, you know, if you can live on forever. Right. And uh, it was very easy to go into the behavioral science. But then I was checking out all the, you know, where are the jobs? What do I want to do? I like to take care of people. I'm a very empathic person. I'm a little bit of mom to everyone. And, you know, I like to care for people. And they really need nurses, registered yeah. nurses here. It's like uh, you will have a job until you die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wayne, the, the, let, let's not waste any more time, right? So we know that the coronavirus is, you know, in the news. It's in the news. Everyone's talking about it. We did an episode of um, The Infinite Fringe on my podcast, on Apple Podcast, with uh, Len Horowitz, and broke that down a bit. And then, um, what's his name? John Rappaport went on with um, with uh, Don Jeffries here on the station that you guys should go check out. That was a fantastic show, too, breaking down the coronavirus. And they both did it in different ways. And uh, Wayne is going to provide something different, even though we will get into some of the mainstream not necessarily mainstream that's a bad word to use but some more conventional explanations to what's going down here and then he's going to de-occulty it's fantastic go ahead wayne um you take the floor and uh if you need me i'll be here go ahead all right man well let's uh let's go ahead and just break down right uh the beginning of, of what we know that they're they are pushing in the mainstream about this uh coronavirus this new uh evil what they call it the novel coronavirus 2019 that's that's what they dubbed it that's the official name they gave it so what we know about it it, it kicked off in a city no, known as wuhan china okay and 